Join audio. Okay, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Seattle. And I want to make sure that I'm using the right audio. I think that I am. So this is recording with my fancy schmancy microphone. I just went, I'm a multimedia artist uh, and a free range human being. I live in Seattle, Washington, United States, and I'm 52 years old. I always feel like I have to say that um, as if somebody's watching me for the first time, whoever's going to listen to this video. Uh, I was just in an art therapy group. Um, I belong to a journal group, a creative writing group, an art therapy group, and then I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, therapy with somebody um, because of my challenges with being highly sensitive and being uh, an only child of parents who I think neglected me in my opinion and um, just helped me deal with my challenges and my issues in life. And so I was just in a group and it's kind of a, a weird feeling of, of, we talked about gratitude and I was saying that I could only really do gratitude in my journal if I first get my anger, my fear, whatever's bothering me, because I tend to be a rebellious person. And so I was just in a group and I feel uncomfortable because when I'm in groups, I sometimes feel defensive or competitive, or I'm afraid that the other people are competitive, but maybe it's really me who feels competitive. And I do a lot of artwork and I don't want to brag and show off, but I want to do my best and shine my light. So I shared this piece of art today in the group. This is a big canvas. This is a, um, it's called Print Me. And I had this printed on canvas. This is digital art that I made. This is a black and white self-portrait. And then this is a painting, uh, a, a print. I took a printmaking class in Seattle. And this is a viscosity oil ink print that I did that's abstract shapes that I created. Um, and then in Photoshop, I superimposed the digital photo with the digital photo of, a digital photo of me with a digital photo of a painting that I made. So I turned it into a digital art and then had it printed on a canvas. And so this is print me, and this is sort of me disappearing into my art. I'm really into nature and I'm just a very kind of natural, whoops, human being. Um, and then I do a lot of self portraits and I talked about um, some people accuse me of being a narcissist because I take hundreds of photos of myself and I'm a model and a photographer and an artist and a graphic designer. So when I take photos of myself, I tend to think of, you know, it's like I'm an actor and a director, you know, like I'm the photographer in me is directing the model in me. And so being a model is similar to being an actor. You're sort of projecting. And when other people photograph me, I usually don't look as good as this. These are all pictures I took of myself. Very few photographers can photograph me and I look really good. Like this is really, I look, I mean, in my opinion, I think I look beautiful in all four of these photos that I took and I painted my face in the top one. Uh, primal Krang, and this is underwater with my waterproof camera in the Bahamas. When I got to work with this amazing photographer and body painter named Monty Knowles, he actually got amazing pictures of me, uh, but he's really good at directing the model and getting the best photos out of every model that he works with, or even just regular people that aren't models. He gets beautiful photos of them. He, he, he helps people um, radiate from within you know, he helps them find their inner beauty and captures it on camera. And then they have more outer beauty because they have inner beauty. This is print me. And then this is, I airbrushed this to make my skin look more perfect and all that. But I love this kind of angle, like old Hollywood style um, angle. And then I also do, you know, abstract pastel drawings and that these are more, you know, more self-portraits underwater in a pool, you know, so, and then this is a necklace I made out of glass. Uh, a friend of mine named Anne has a glass studio and I went to her studio and I arranged scraps of glass that she had in a nice design and then it melted into this design and I love it. So, um, 
Yeah, self-portraits. And so today in the art therapy group, I suggested they asked if we had ideas of projects we could do. And I mentioned self-portraits because one thing I love about humans is that they're all different. Like it's true that we're all connected and we're all similar. You know, we all want love and kindness and safety and security and to feel like people like us and care about us and we're connected and we belong. We all want to feel like we belong. I love doing self-portraits and I have to accept the fact that a lot of people don't seem to like doing self-portraits. Maybe it would be nice if I found other artists. Like I love Frida Kylo, the painter. She did a lot of self-portraits and some people actually gave her some flack for that. And she's like, well, you know, cause she was sick in bed a lot. And so Frida Kylo said, well, I'm always available to be a model for myself. And so part of why she painted herself a lot other than wanting to express something inside of her, you know, her feelings about her life is that she was always there. And I feel that way too. Like I'm a little shy and insecure around other people in some ways, even though I'm an art model for a living and I model for other people, I'm comfortable being in front of people if they want to paint me or draw me and make art in my likeness or be inspired by looking at me, even if they if somebody looks at me and turns me into an abstract, not realistic representation, I like that too. I love abstract art better actually than realistic art in terms of my own personal taste. Um, but I appreciate realistic realism in art. And that's kind of why I became a model because I don't have any interest in drawing the model and doing realistic art. Uh, what I'm interested in is more abstraction. I love like this is one of my pastel drawings windsong spiral drive so i draw very non-representationally so i asked if anybody would want to do self-portraits and i sense that maybe they're not that interested because i think people feel self-conscious and in an uncomfortable way i love the idea of doing self-portraits obviously so i guess that's just one of my you know and it is sad i do feel alone in that um this painting is called mapping uh, mapping internal lands this um and this looks really nice printed onto other things so i love i love doing um self-portraits uh, whether it's photography or painting but i mostly do photography um so i just wanted to share i don't know what the point of this video is this is just shannon kringen it's a uh, February 25th, 2021. I'm an artist and a model. I model for myself. That's true. When I, when I do self-portraits, I feel photo photographic self-portraits. I feel like, I mean, everyone does selfies now, I guess, but a self-portrait that's truly an expression of what's inside you is different than just taking a snapshot of yourself in the mirror or I don't know, like just a casual selfie selfie, as they say, um, I'm talking about something with more depth than that, like something that's truly expressing your individuality. So one thing I love about, like when you're in a group, there's an expectation that everyone conforms and we're all the same in a certain way. So what I like is when I'm in it, when I'm with a group of people, I think what makes me tick is to listen to every single person's unique voice. I mean, everybody looks a little different, their bone structure, the sound of their voice. I'm very sensitive to people's cadence in the rhythm of how they speak. Uh, I am a huge fan of musicians and I, cause I think I'm a little bit, um, well, I might be a little bit autistic, but um, meaning I, I see things in an abstract way and I do things out of order and um but I love music I Tom Petty widens my jetty he's one of my favorite songwriters and um um I don't read well I think I'm a bit dyslexic but I've never been officially diagnosed as dyslexic here's a lot of my abstract uh designs swirling shapes and here are four more of that. That's fake money sticking out there. For those of you wondering, that's fake money. Um, it's like a fake thing. It's like a satire. Okay. So Kringamorphosis is here and me in a mud puddle in Norway. And again, underwater in a pool in the Bahamas. So portrait with my waterproof camera, primal Kring where I painted my face and was in the world naked bike ride or the summer solstice parade 
bike ride. I'm not sure which one. Um, I used to do all three bike rides in Seattle, the body pride ride and in conjunction with gay pride and um, pride and everybody. And uh, the summer solstice parade here in Seattle, uh, body painted bicycle ride, and then the uh, world naked bike ride. So there it is. So um, although I wear pasties in a G string, I'm not hundred percent nude, but I'm like as nude as possible. Um, and then there's my abstract designs. And so I just wanted to share, I also did a, I published, I self-published this book, Art, Identity, and the Sacred. Basically, my art is my spiritual practice. My art is how I find myself by losing myself, et cetera, or amplifying. Amplified chameleon is another phrase that comes to mind. Amplified chameleon. Um, I'm inspired by words. I'm inspired by song lyrics. I, I don't read well. Um, I respond better if I listen to movies and podcasts and lectures and books on tape and music, the song lyrics from a young age, like from age 11, I was trying to figure out the lyrics to songs and remember them and sing along with them. So I'm really word oriented, performance oriented. I'm just still trying to figure it out. Like what makes me tick is I like people's individuality. I appreciate everyone as a unique individual. And I don't know if everybody thinks that way. Well, obviously, some people want to just focus on what you have in common with other people. What I have in common, like I like to say oxymorons through the door, a group for loners, and they all showed up. So it's kind of like, I like groups where our individuality is appreciated and we're not considered weird we're considered every single person is an individual like we all have eyes ears nose mouth we all breathe oxygen we all eat and sleep and do a lot of the same things on this planet earth <clears throat> and yet each person is unique each, you know our fingerprints are all unique literally we have different fingerprints this is a tattoo that i designed that's be yourself no matter what they say a, a lyric from a Sting song called Englishman in New York that I love from the album Dream of the Blue Turtles. So be yourself no matter what they say. Uh, because I was made fun of as a little kid and bullied by other little kids because I think when little kids see somebody that's a little eccentric, they want to pick on, they want to poke that poke, 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 poke and see how that person responds. And um, I never learned how to stand up for myself and have a sense of humor about people who bullied me. So I took it real seriously and it bothered me. So some people were very mean to me and I think other little kids were probably just trying to tease me and joke around with me and I didn't know how to take a joke. Uh, I didn't, I took it too seriously. I probably should have just teased them back, but I didn't know how to do that. So um, I still really don't know how to do that. So, okay. Just sharing. So individuality, self-portraits, um, everybody's different and yet we're all here together. And so I don't want to lose my sense of individuality. And I think individuality is a good thing and not selfish and mean. There's a difference between being really self-centered and having no empathy for other people and just simply feeling like you're in your own skin and you're a unique human being and you're a unique soul. And we're all here to express our individuality and contribute in our own unique way like Mr. Rogers, you know, the It's a Wonderful Neighborhood guy said, Fred Rogers, you know, he said, everyone is special. And I believe, I agree. I think every single person is special in their own way. And we all have different weaknesses and strengths. And so what part of what drives me is the idea of appreciating me and appreciating others and encouraging other people to appreciate their own personal power. So I guess in the group today, I felt I always feel really uncomfortable when I join these groups because I feel defensive and competitive and like, like I'm on trial or like I have to, like, I not only feel like I need to apologize for my talent and my beauty, I also feel like I, I'm ashamed of my, I like to say, tame the shame, suck the sugar cane. So like I have a double whammy. I'm afraid of success and failure. I'm, a, I'm ashamed of my flaws and my talent. How sad is that? There's a Marion Williamson, or is it Nelson Mandela, who said, you know, what we're really afraid of is how great we are, not how bad we are. 
who are we to shine our light, et cetera. So like you, you don't serve the world by shrinking and being self-defeating and humble and artificially humble. Being humble is a good thing, but being pretending like you're humble, like being self-conscious and saying, and thinking that it's bragging to do your best. Like, I feel like if I do my best, other people will be jealous of me. And that's, that's a horrible feeling of feeling like, so I hold back. I think I hold back a lot, but people accuse me of being a narcissist because I, you know, because I, I take all these cool self-portraits. I mean, I consider this my art. This isn't just me being like a narcissistic, self-indulgent, look at me, look how cool I am. This is therapeutic for me because when other people photograph me, I don't look this good. Like I'm uncomfortable hamming it up in front of a photographer. And that's what models are supposed to do. Models, you know, Cindy Crawford and all the amazing fashion models, they're supposed to like pose and like, stick their, you know, oh, get like, you know, twist and turn and do their facial expression and look their best because they want to create a beautiful photograph with a great photographer. Um, and I have a hard time doing that when someone else photographs me, except the guy Monty Knowles in the Bahamas. He got amazing pictures of me because he helped me. He, when he saw that I had a, a worried look on my face or, or I had self-doubt, he's like, think of something you love. Think of something beautiful. Think of Tom Petty that you have a crush on or, or beautiful, you know, your lover, your boyfriend, or something that makes you happy. Think about your cat, think about something you love. And he would help me get my facial expression, get my inner and outer beauty, both, you know, happening. So I take photos of myself partly to boost my confidence, to express parts of me that do not come out. Like Meryl Streep said, she acts because she channels characters that would never have a life if she didn't act them out and give them life. And so I love that. And so I feel like these are different facets of my own personality that would never come through unless I photograph myself. So if I'm alone with my camera and my microphone, I do the self-portrait thing or just like I'm doing a monologue right now. So what makes me, what drives me in life is my individuality and my wanting to express and share my art with anybody who's interested. Um, so just wanted to share that. That's just how I feel today. Focus camera. Okay, there we go. I don't have any makeup on. I'm just like still in my pajamas, got my plants sitting in my living room. Th these are my fabric backdrops that I use when I'm an art model. I pose here in this room and I, I clear the space and make the backdrop all nice and neat and clean. And then I pose uh, in my living room for people who want to draw me and paint me. And I'm really grateful that I can do that. So I just wanted to share that. Have a good day, everyone. My website is shannonkringen.com. I also have a Patreon you can support me on. If you want, just ask me, look into that um, goddess Kring on Patreon, but go to shannonkringen.com. You can also publish my photos on Flickr under free under creative commons you can publish any of my photos for free and just give me credit as photographer a lot of people have published my photos all over the world and i'm so grateful um some people think i shouldn't do that i should only charge for my photos but i don't like to i like to have creative commons and not copyright my photos i like to share them and then i get more traffic on my website so it's kind of like free traffic for me and it makes me feel good that my photos are useful to other people that my photos are interesting enough because there's millions of photos on the internet and my photos are interesting enough so that people actually publish my photos all over the place and buzzfeed and all kinds of npr and bill moyers and all kinds of different websites over the years and random local seattle websites and and um, radio stations and all kinds of different things so i'm really grateful for that and um because I have a lot of talent and I don't want to hold back. I wish that I could celebrate my talent without feeling like that was arrogant because both my parents gave me this message of don't want to be egotistical. You don't want to be a, you don't want to be a power tripper. You don't want to be a, a overrated or underrated or self-indulgent or egotistical or whatever. It's like, okay, you don't want to be like that. You want to be arrogant, but do you want to be self-confident? I think having self-confidence is a good thing. And doing your best, do your best. Because I remember in school thinking, ah, it doesn't matter, whatever. And I didn't do my best. But with my artwork, I tend to do my best. So, and then if other people are jealous and think I'm showing off or bragging, um, 
that bothers me, but I have to just forget about that. I have to, just like Tom Petty was accused of sounding, I mean, he does, he, he, in the beginning he sounded, well, he still does. He sounds like Bob Dylan in the birds. And imagine if Tom Petty shrunk when he heard that criticism. Oh, you sound like, you sound like the birds. You're just copying the birds. You're copying Bob Dylan and the birds. You're copying Bob Dylan and the birds. And it's like, okay, he sounded very similar to Bob Dylan and the birds, but he had his own Tom Petty style that shined through. The older he got, the more he developed his own Tom Petty-ness. So I'm just using that as an example. Imagine if Tom Petty was insecure enough to the point where when he heard people saying he's actually, he, he had a positive attitude. He said he didn't even think he could sound like Bob Dylan because he loves Bob Dylan. Tom Petty loved Bob Dylan and appreciated Bob Dylan and the birds and the Beatles and, and the Rolling Stones and all the amazing bands that he was influenced by and Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and all the great blues people and Johnny Cash and all that. So when Tom Petty, that's actually, that's really good. He can, he interpreted that as you sound like the birds and Bob Dylan. He's like, wow, I didn't even think I could sound like those people because I love those people. And so he took it almost as a compliment in a way, instead of feeling ashamed of it. Because usually when an artist is told that they're sort of copying somebody else, it's like considered a bad thing. So he interpreted it in a more positive way because I've heard him interviewed about this. He's like, I didn't even know I could sound like those people. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so he thought it was amazing. So that's actually a more, most positive way to interpret that. But I want to shine my light and not feel ashamed of my talent. And also I have flaws. I have deficits. I have weaknesses. I also have talent. So everybody seems to have weaknesses and strengths. So I think it would be great if more people would step into their personal power and not apologize for it. And then when they screw up and make a mistake or don't do something very good, say, well, oh, well, that wasn't very good. Oh, well, it wasn't perfect. Because if someone's a perfectionist, it stops them from doing their art. Uh, but also if you're afraid of being too successful, like if you're afraid of failure and you're a perfectionist, that will hold you back. But if you're afraid of being accused of being arrogant and narcissistic and self-indulgent and, and, oh, you're just showing off, you know, um, that can hold, that that has held me back. I feel like I hold myself back because people have said, you're a narcissist, Shannon, you're narcissistic. Who do you think you are? You don't know what you're, you know, you know what you're doing, you know, like insecure people who are insecure and uh, want to shame me for showing off or being a, an eccentric, unique artist who wants to put their stuff everywhere. So I love to share my stuff. And in some ways I feel shy and like, I don't know where I belong. And that's kind of why I do that. I'm trying to compensate for that. Maybe it's like the Wizard of Oz. Like maybe Shannon is just the little lady behind the curtain and Goddess Kring is the Wizard of Oz. You know, that's, I, I, that might be what I'm doing here, but, or Willy Wonka or something like that. I'm really inspired by Willy Wonka like Gene Wilder, you know, and that whole, and then Tom Petty being the Mad Hatter and all of that in that movie, um, Don't Come Around Here No More, where he plays the Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland and all that jazz. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. This is Shani Kringen. I'm inspired today. Um, so my website, shanikringen.com. Bye for now. Have a good day, everyone. Do your thing. Do what you love. Follow your heart. Follow your passion. Follow your dreams. Ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, inner energy, life force, come forth. That's some of my poetry. Bye for now.